your expressions don't have to be complicated. Now, the other day I was working on a couple of things and a couple of scenes for a little project that I'm working on. It's a new project and maybe I'll launch it here as well, but I don't think it's not completely related, but maybe some of you might find it useful. It's a different target market. But anyways, so I wanted to do something like these basically. But the issue is that if you do a normal transform node, all these are going to actually rotate like that. And they're not going to rotate like these. If you get what I'm saying, right? They will rotate like that. If you use a normal transform node with a pivot in the center, it will rotate like that with the face going like that. Now, if you want these to rotate like these with these, uh, basically your PNG or your image or your element still in the same direction, let's call this, there's a couple of things you can do. Let me show you the first way of doing these. First of all, this one allows you to have a little bit more control of things. The second one, not as much. And the third one is actually, uh, we're going to do it using a little tool that X session built. Now I've been promising him that I build, that I would do a review on his tool and I just haven't had the chance to do it. And it just keeps getting delayed as everything because time just flies like that. But yeah, let me show you the first one. So in this case, what I do did here, this looks a little bit um, scary maybe, but this is all just the same thing, but just copied a bunch of times. Basically these, I created a PNG and I use a background so that is wide little circle. And then we have the, the PNG of the Avengers of logo and it's right there. We have our LM right there. Here we have these composition and this is where the simple expression plays. Let me actually deactivate all of these first so that we can see how it would look without these. Also, I forgot to mention. So I duplicated these four times and then I put the circles on the places where I want them to be. One on top, right, bottom, and left, right? That's what we have right here. Now, in this case, you can adjust the position of these, which allows you to, or gives you a little bit more control of like where you want these to be located. If you want to animate things a little bit more interesting later on, you can do that as well using this method. And we have these transform node right here, which is the one that's giving it the rotation of the elements like that, all of the elements at the same time. What I did here was I created this transform node and I simply created an expression that does these. It takes this transform node right here or it's connected to this angle right here of the main transform node. And then it multiplies that by negative one. So basically it's on the general one. We have that big circle and then these smaller ones, we have a rotation that's actually doing the opposite. If I try to, let me put these both on screen. We can see that the value of all of these is going to be the same. Right. We have the expression on this one right here and we have the rotation on this one. This one right here is the main rotation. And if we press play, we can see the values of these are exactly the same ones. And that was all made by using a simple expression. The cool thing about this is that it allows you and gives you a little bit more freedom on if you want to animate like the position of your elements. Maybe you want to animate elements coming into the circle like that and then exploding or whatever. This gives you a little bit more control on that. Now, that's basically the expression. It's pretty simple. I don't know why I talk too much, but anyways, we're here to learn. And if you want to learn, you got to ramble a little bit and explore. OK, now let me show you the second method. The second method is a little bit more accurate in the sense of like there, the path is a little bit more fixed, I guess. Now we have these transform over here. They all have a path animation. So to do that, all you have to do is grab one. And in this case, we only need one element. So we have this main element, which is the same one that we used. And then we have four different transform nodes that have the same animation. It looks like these. You add a transform node like that. And I'm going to add these and connect these there. We have that. Now you right click and then you can just create path. Once you have the path modifier created, you can actually just get rid of this displacement keyframe. Then you can right click right here, go to polyline, create ellipse. You can adjust the size of these however you want. Now, there, this happens a little bit when you move this path because for some reason it doesn't show up in the center. And then actually, 
I can make these go a little bit lower like that and adjust it so that it's on the right place. Now, hold control to adjust the curves right here so that it becomes a circle back again. For some reason, it does these when you move it, so I'm not sure why. You could do these by moving it as here as well if you want to, but yeah. Okay. And then all you want to do is animate these like that. Now, in this case, you can increase the size of the path like that. And then if you want to adjust the size of the actual element, you want to add another transform node behind these, for example. That way you have an individual control for the element. And here on the modifier, you can maybe animate these with the anim curves like that. So it's always going to be rotating like that or add individual keyframes if you want that. And in this case, what I did was I have one of them like that. And then on the modifier on the next one, I just go to the Z rotation and I increase the value so that it's a little bit more offset like that. Let me see here. We have 90. So it's a little bit offset on from that main one that we have, which is at zero, right? So we have 90. Then we have this one should be on the last one, but we have 180 right here. And then we have the 270 right here. And it does the same thing without you having to have that expression. Now, on this case, if you were to animate these like, like that, the path would be modified. So you could add some interesting things right here as well. But this is another method that you can use if you want to create something like that. And then from there, expand on what your idea is. All right, now let's go into this one using the tool that X session created. Actually, let me copy this initial portion right here. We have that element right there. Now, X session created a tool called Motion Suite. And over the past couple of months, I've been trying it out whenever I have the time. And whenever I found some issues, I just email him and he responds pretty much right away if he's able to. And he was able to improve these um, whenever I had an issue. So if you find these useful or helpful on your workflow, you might want to consider getting these. Uh, he does have a collection of a bunch of different tools. And to be honest, if you're looking at these from the first time you look at it, it can be a little bit overwhelming because there's a ton of stuff in it. Um, but in this case, if we wanted to do that simple orbiting, it's called right here, we have this option right here that adds a transform node that is already set up in that way. Now it gives you two controls, the radius, which allows you to increase the size of these. And then we have this rotation. Now, in this case, you might have, you might have to end up using that simple, simple expression again, like we did before. And to do that, we can right click and then hold shift. I'm going to do that right here. Rotation times negative one. So now when you move these, it stays still again if you wanted to. But yeah, he does add, he does have these tools that you can animate with the animal curves. For example, it will continuously move like that. But it gives you a little bit of um, control. Now, in this case, we it created another one using the merge node orbit, but usually would be a transform node. But the cool thing here is that all these tools that he created, there is another tool that you can use that he added right here, which is called macro pack unpack. So if you click that, it basically creates the group version of these so that you can see what's inside. And then maybe you can adjust the things that are in here individually if you're a little bit more advanced and if you want to create it. Now, to be honest, this tool is more for people that are a little bit more advanced. If you're a complete beginner, you might get confused with these. But if you already know what you're doing, you might end up saving a ton of time if you are constantly working and having to do the same things over and over. Now, as you can see here, he does have a ton of things. You have the paths right here. You have lines, which adds a different lines that you can um, merge nodes right here. Let's see. Now, sometimes, now I'm not even completely familiar with everything that has that it has to over, so I get, I can get lost and I just not know how everything works. That was one of the things that I mentioned to him. He might, if he has the time, he has to create some sort of documentation where it explains every section a little bit more in detail. That way it's a little bit more easy to 
um, make the learning curve of these two a little bit easier to follow, right? Uh, he does have a ton of things here. Like the long shadow one is pretty cool. If you have a text, if you want to do a long shadow effect, not text 3D, text plus. And then I did long shadow. You have that right there. Now, if you were to do want to do this long shadow uh, manually in Resolve, it would take you a bunch of time more, but then you can, if you want to learn how to do it, you can just unpack these and then you can see that it looks like that. And it's a little bit, I mean, it will save you time, right? But to be able to figure out how to make all of these work is definitely a, pretty much like a masterpiece, right? So he does have a ton of cool things out here that, that you can use to create some really interesting things. Um, he also has the curve stuff right here that allow you to, when you animate something, which is something that in DaVinci Resolve is a little bit complicated. Let's take a look at the spline tool. We have this curve right here, and what he does is that you click these, for example, and in theory, let me see, live update, refresh, there it goes. It creates a curve that follows that along. So then you can make these, let's say that you want to try a different curve. Then you can just double click and it has a completely different curve. Now, this is not completely dynamic. You would have to adjust this if you make these longer or shorter um, because it creates basically one keyframe following that stuff because it's basically done with scripts that he created, right? But it's really cool. I wanted to I, actually two years ago, I was going to build something similar, not exactly similar, uh, not on this level. I, I don't I don't have enough coding knowledge to actually script something like this which is pretty complex. So if you are some sort of medium or advanced user, this tool is definitely something you might want to look into. Uh, explore it a bit more. I think he does have a free demo available as well. So you should definitely check these out if you think that these things could help in your workflow. Now, one cool thing that I, uh, that I ended up playing around with is uh, where is this? I was just moving things around and I played with this bender node for some reason. Oh, here it is. Here it is. And this bender node allows you to create some pretty cool things. Like if you, not here, but if you animate, where is this? No. Right here, you can actually move these around and look at how dynamic that movement is. Imagine you create, it, it will be really cool to use these for some interesting like abstract motion graphics projects. So. It has a lot of things. You have to explore this further and then dive in a little bit because it does have a little bit of a learning curve for you to get into. But I think that once you are able to understand it, it would definitely be something that you would use every day if you're working on stuff like this. That's the video. I just wanted to make it a little quick video but that ended up not being that quick. But I also wanted to feature X's motion suite tool that I promised him that I was going to make a sort of like a review a long time ago, months ago, actually, and I just hadn't had the chance to. But I wanted to show you that little expression that I just, it was simple. Like a lot of things are simple and you don't have to make them that much complicated. And then I just decided it would be a good time to also try to dive in a little bit into the motion suite tool. So that is it for this video once again. I hope I see you in the next one here in Suave. Bye.